Today I'm sewing and sharing the Wren Blouse and Dress by Chalk and Notch Patterns. This pattern worked out really nicely with the fabric that I chose, the turquoise and blue-black African Batik fabric by Urban Stacks. The weight of the fabric complemented the silhouette of the dress, and the size of the pattern pieces did justice to the bold print of the fabric. Urban Stacks carries a large selection of beautiful, bold, and colorful African print fabrics. It was fun looking through their selection of beautiful materials and it was hard to choose just one. I've left a link to the pattern and the fabric below so you can check out all the details and sew along with me. So grab that pattern, cut out your fabric, mark your notches, and let's get started. Apply interfacing to the wrong sides of your front neck facings and your back neck facing. Also apply interfacing to the wrong side of your center front bodice pieces using the interfacings that you cut from your center front interfacing pattern piece. I've transferred the darts for my pattern piece onto my front bodice fabric pieces, and now I'm ready to pin them in place. Fold your dart in half, and pin through one dart leg and out the other. And now I'm ready to sew my darts, sewing from the outside edge to the point, leaving thread tails at the point so I can tie them in knots. and then press your darts down toward the bottom of the blouse. I'm also choosing to sew my back darts even though they are optional, so I've transferred those darts onto the wrong side of my fabric for my back fabric piece. Now, just as I did for the front darts, I'm going to fold this dart in half and pin through one dart leg and out the other. So here I've pinned both of my back darts. I'm gonna take them to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew along my traced dart lines leaving thread tails this time at the beginning and the end so that I could tie both ends in knots. And then press those back darts out toward the side seams. Place your front and back bodice pieces right sides together and pin or clip your shoulder seams. Sew your shoulder seams with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and finish your seams with your desired method. I'm going to be using my serger. Place your front and back facing pieces right sides together and pin or clip your shoulder seams. Sew the shoulder seams with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and press your seams open. I've gone ahead and taken my facing to the ironing board and pressed all of the outer raw edges to the wrong side by about 3 8 of an inch. Here is the neckline along my front bodice pieces. I'm going to place the short ends of my facing right sides together with the top center fronts of my front bodice pieces. Aligning the raw edges and pin those short edges in place. Sew from the top of your facing and over that folded edge and then continue with that 3 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way to the bottom of your blouse. Now that our facings are attached at the top center fronts, we can open out that facing, press the entire seam allowance along that stitching line that we just stitched to the wrong side by 3 8 of an inch. Now that we have those outer raw edges folded to the wrong side of the fabric, we're going to fold and press the material once again to the wrong side along the edge of that interfacing to form our placket. And do this for both of your center fronts. Now we can continue pinning the facing all around the neckline. Open out that memory crease that we just pressed for the placket and fold it backwards so that that placket is now right sides together with the bodice. Fold it back right along that interfacing and pin in place. Now continue pinning that facing all the way around matching your notches and your shoulder seams. And then sew your neckline from center front all the way around to the opposite center front with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now we're going to trim this facing seam all the way around by about half. Also trim the sharp corners at your center front. Now we're going to understitch this facing. Flip this facing over its seam allowance. And then we're going to stitch this facing all the way around to its seam allowance with less than an eighth of an inch seam allowance. 
As we're understitching and we reach the center front corners, your presser foot won't be able to understitch all the way to the corner, so just understitch as far as you can. Now we can turn this facing to the inside of the garment, poking out those two center front corners. Now with our center front memory creases already in place and the 3 8 of an inch raw edge still pressed under, we're going to turn that facing to the inside of the garment and pin all the way around. We're pinning around the neck facing as well, so make sure that those raw edges are still tucked under. Now we're going to edge stitch our facing all the way around. Edge stitching with just less than an eighth of an inch seam allowance starting at one of the bottom center fronts, all the way up to the top of your center front, pivoting your stitching to sew all the way around the neckline, pivoting once again back down that folded edge of your facing to the bottom of the opposite center front. Give that neckline a really good press all the way around. At the top of your short sleeve, you have notches indicating where we're going to be sewing our basting stitches to gather the top of the sleeve. We're going to sew basting stitches on our fabric from one notch on one side of the center of the top of the sleeve to the other notch on the other side. We're going to sew the basting stitches at the top of both of our sleeves using the longest stitch on your machine with about a quarter inch seam allowance from one notch all the way to the other leaving thread tails at the beginning and end of our stitching so that we have threads to pull for gathering. Here is one of my bodice arm size opened out flat. I'm going to take one of my sleeves and place it right sides together with this arm size, making sure that my notches match for the front and the back, and then pin in place. Now I'm going to start pulling the gathering stitches at the top of my sleeve so that the top of the sleeve fits the arm side. Once the material fits and the gathers are distributed evenly, go ahead and pin this area in place. Do this for both sleeves. Sew both of your sleeves to the bodice with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and then finish your seams with your preferred method. Place your front and back bodice right sides together and pin the side seam of the bodice as well as the underarm seam of the sleeve. And do this on both sides. Sew both of your side seams from the bottom hem of your garment to the bottom hem of your sleeve with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and then finish your seams. Grab your lower sleeve pieces and fold them right sides together matching the short ends. And pin in place. Do this for both lower sleeve pieces and sew your seams with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and then finish those seams. Now we're going to attach the lower sleeve to the upper sleeve. For a cleaner finish here, the pattern calls for a French seam. So we're first going to place the lower sleeve on the upper sleeve wrong sides together. So with those wrong sides of the fabrics touching, pin the lower sleeve to the upper sleeve all the way around. Make sure to match those underarm seams. Sew this seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now we're going to trim this seam by half all the way around. And then turn your garment and this sleeve right side out. Flip your lower sleeve over the upper sleeve so that now the fabric is facing right sides together. And give this attachment seam a really good press all the way around. Now that the sleeve seams are pressed, we're ready to sew this seam once again all the way around with a quarter inch seam allowance, enclosing our French seam. Repeat all of these steps to attach your other lower sleeve to your other upper sleeve on the opposite side.
Take both of your short sleeve facings to your ironing board and press up those raw edges to the wrong side by just shy of 3 8 of an inch all the way around, doing this for both outer edges. Now unfold those memory creases just for a moment and place your short edges right sides together. Pin in place with that folded edge opened out. Sew both of these sleeve facings with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and press your seams open. Now place the unfolded edge of your facing right sides together with the bottom of your sleeve. Matching your seams and pin all the way around. Do this for both sleeves. Sew the facings to the bottom of your sleeves all the way around with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now we're going to understitch the facing just as we did for the neckline facing. So open out that facing over that sleeve seam. And we're going to sew the facing to the seam that's underneath with just under an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around. And do this for both sleeves. Now that that's understitched, fold the facing to the inside of the garment along that seam line and give that seam line a really good press all the way around for both sleeves. Now here's my sleeve turned inside out with the facing pressed to the inside of the garment. With the raw edge of our facing still pressed to the wrong side by 3 8 of an inch, pin the facing to the bottom of the sleeve all the way around. Now we're going to sew the facing to the bottom of the sleeve once again, edge stitching close to the inner fold of the facing all the way around. When you get back to where you started with your stitching, leave an opening of about two inches so that we can insert our elastic. For the bottom of the sleeves, I've cut two strips of 3 8 inch wide elastic. To get the length of your elastic, measure the circumference of your bicep and add two inches to that measurement. Now I'm going to place a safety pin at the short edge of my elastic. And I'm going to place that safety pin into that sleeve casing through the opening I left in my stitching and draw it through all the way around. Once my elastic comes out the other end, I'm going to overlap those ends of the elastic by 3 8 of an inch and zigzag stitch back and forth a few times to secure. Pull your secured elastic to the inside of the casing and then sew this opening closed following your original stitching line. Repeat all of these steps so that you have your elastic encased in both of your casings. I've used my button template pattern piece to mark the placement of my buttonholes all along my right placket. And now I'm ready to sew my buttonholes. Open each of your buttons and then place your right placket over your left and use your buttonholes to mark the opposite placket for where you want to sew your buttons. Now I'm going to sew on each of my buttons according to the markings that I made on my left placket. Now I'm going to button my bottom most button and I'm going to baste the bottom edges of the placket together with the longest stitch on my machine. Place your front and back ruffle skirt pieces right sides together. And pin or clip your side seams. And do this for both side seams. Sew both of the ruffle skirt side seams with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and finish your seams. Now we're going to baste around the entire top raw edge of the skirt piece using about a quarter inch seam allowance. Because it's such a large circumference of material, it might be helpful to baste from one seam all the way to the other seam and then stop, leaving thread tails on both sides. And then start a fresh set of stitches, again leaving thread tails, sewing back to that opposite seam, leaving thread tails here as well. Now place the basted edge of your ruffle right sides together with the bottom edge of your bodice. I've pinned the ruffle to the bodice at the side seam and the center front. 
Now I'm going to pull those ruffle basting stitches and gather the ruffle from the side seam to the center front. Once the ruffle fits the bottom edge of that portion of fabric and the gathers are distributed evenly, I'm going to pin that section in place. Now I'm going to pin the side seams of the bodice and the ruffle together on the opposite side. And then I'm going to pull those gathering stitches once again to match the lengths of the fabrics from notch to notch. And then pin that section in place. Repeat the same process for your back skirt, gathering the material from side seam to center back so that you have the ruffle skirt pinned all the way around. Sew the ruffled panel to the bottom of your bodice all the way around with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and then finish your seams. And now the very last step is to hem the bottom of this ruffle skirt. You can decide how wide or how narrow you want your hem to be, but the pattern calls for a rolled hem. Fold your bottom raw edge to the wrong side of your fabric by a quarter of an inch, and then a quarter of an inch once more, rolling that hem all the way around. Once you have that hem pressed in place, you're going to edge stitch close to this inner fold all the way around your skirt, and you're all done with your dress. Thank you for watching this sew along. Make sure you check out my other videos for more great sewing inspiration and I'll see you in the next video.